Hello everyone, this video is on IBO 06 International Business Finance and uh, let's see a few a quick important questions uh, that you should revise for this uh, examination. Okay, let's start uh, straight away from uh, unit 1 and uh, those who have not yet subscribed to my channel kindly subscribe and if you like this video give a like and do share it to your friends right so in unit 1 you should study about international monetary system now let me tell you what is this ims all about basically it is uh, you know a system of uh, regulation and valuation of exchange of currency like how much currency should be exchanged for the other currencies so that is what is uh, termed as IMS international monetary system because we know like different countries have different exchange rates different types of currencies so their exchange rates are monitored and regulated by this institution right so this one is uh, you should go through this then let's see the working mechanism of this system basically you know there are three mechanisms here first one uh, which is also called as gold standard and uh, it was prevalent uh, way back in uh, from 1816 to 1914 and uh, you know because of some of the drawbacks of this gold standard system now these are the drawbacks right i have written here so again it was uh, you know it was changed to Bretton Woods system and again Bretton Woods system changed to the current system right and uh, Bretton Wood system it was uh, again like it, it was set up in 1945 and it existed till 1972 but due to again some of the loopholes and drawbacks it was changed to the new system which is now you know prevalent all over the world so this is what you have to describe in this now there are few advantages and disadvantages of the current monetary system which you should revise at any cost okay uh, let's move on to the next topic international financial system now again it is uh, related with the same topic but a little bit narrow concept now this mechanism works through financial transactions that takes place between two or more countries and uh, it is basically you know monetary in nature and it includes all the foreign direct investment and exchange rate ratios and uh, this system was uh, established by WTO, IMF and World Bank. You know about this, these three important institutions which looks after the international trade. And the main objectives of this financial system were to create a structural payment system so that there are no disputes and there is uniformity in the transactions and uh, to give money its value that it deserves. Uh, it reduces the risk of, uh, you know, transaction and translation exposure and it enables the most efficient you know allocation of the economic resources and maintains stability all throughout the world so these are the main objectives of this financial system and there are few components of this elements through which it works like there are many institutions like wto imf world bank then there are financial market like you know capital market and money market uh, this is money market then we have capital market and we have foreign exchange market so these are the important components of the financial system all over the world that follow uh, that follows by all the country a uh, few more are there okay now let's move on to rdb rdb stands for regional development bank these are created in a particular region comprising of different countries and uh, basically uh, they are f they are formed uh, in a particular you know continent like asia europe africa so here i have mentioned three important rdb first is this inter american the second one is asian development bank and third african development bank so these three are important for your examination point of view right okay then uh, uh, what is the role of rdb why it is framed basically to provide financial institutions to the countries which lie in that particular region 
like the African uh, Development Banking System that provides uh, financials to the African countries. Like that, it helps to you know develop the infrastructure in the countries. Then uh, agricultural development because this is agriculture is a you know key component of the development. Then to uh, to 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 protect the environmental pollution in the countries and it also provides some other miscellaneous facilities to the member countries uh, then we have uh, you can get a short note on this Bretton Woods system just now I briefed you about this it was set up in 1944 and 44 countries that time were a part of this and again due to some deficiencies it was you know it was merged into WTO and uh, there are some uh, deficiencies or you know drawbacks or loopholes which led to the formation of WTO in uh, 19 uh, after 1970s so basically it lacks the confidence problem because uh, that time you know Bretton Wood conference uh, dollar played an important role in the exchange rate so you know uh, due to uh, inflation in that uh, dollars rate so people like you know the countries they lack confidence in this uh, there are some uh, synergy problems in this then some adjustment problems were there due to this uh, like uh, this system was abolished then preferred dilemma so i have explained in detail in my previous videos also about this then problem of symmetry was there in this system then there was a problem of liquidity like converting the currencies into you know liquid currency of domestic countries and uh, there was the condition of inflation about which just now I explained you. Now, uh, Bretton Wood Conf uh, Agreement was you know replaced by WTO or was merged in WTO in 1995 and it took the charge of all the international trade. It regulates, it frames policies, it settles the dis disputes, it provides financial facilities and all sorts of facilities for globalization. So these were the main objectives and functions of WTO. Then another institution which, which plays a very important role in international trade is IMF, International Monetary Fund. And uh, basically as the name implies, it is a type of bank which provides uh, financial facilities to developing and poor countries. Okay and uh, this organization was created in 1945 uh, the headquarters are in washington dc and there are about like currently 200 plus member countries in this and the main functions to lend to give loans to the countries then uh, to you know to develop the the production facilities by providing infrastructure and to monitor the member countries so basically these were uh, like lot of times we have uh, discussed this chapter in IBO 1, 2. So it's a common topic. Okay. Unit 2. Unit 2 is on international financial market. And uh, here financial market, you know, it refers to a place or a market where securities are bought and sold. That means shares, debentures, bonds like that. And uh, these are the main instruments here like international bonds then uh, it's a type of you know like uh, uh, the uh, like shares or debentures which are issued by the companies and subscribed by the investors and the different types of bonds are there as far as international market is concerned like you know domestic bonds are there uh, which are issued underwritten and uh, you know by the domestic country then we have euro bonds which are which are issued in terms of euro currency then foreign bonds are there which are regulated by foreign countries so like this then some instruments traded in the international financial market the first one is foreign exchange we can easily buy and sell foreign exchange in this market uh, we can also you know uh, some derivative products are there like uh, you know gold or uh, options futures so that can be uh, bought and sold then we have international currency market for this currency euro currency can be you know exchanged then uh, some uh, money market instruments this is the most important one uh, like you know treasury bills then we have uh, cp commercial paper then uh, euro commercial paper 
then CP that is certificate of deposits, bankers acceptance, bonds, notes. So there are many such instruments which are traded in international market. Let's move on to the next unit. International money transfer mechanism. How you will transfer money to foreign accounts or foreign uh, buyers or sellers. So basically, you know, uh, there are these methods are very most important. We can uh, transfer money through bank draft or by checks, by international money order, or we can even transfer online by Swift code through Swift code. And we can also have a wire transfer through some of the Western Union banks or Forex banks which are specialized in such transactions. Okay, then we have money market. Money market again where like you know securities are bought and sold and uh, it plays you know you should uh, know about this like why this money market is important because you know uh, it mobilizes the savings then uh, it uh, it helps to earn foreign exchange right and uh, there are a lot of uh, benefits of this and these are the main constituents of money market for every money market you know these instruments are there and uh, it in uh, it includes you know treasury bills uh, call money uh, repo rate and reverse repo rate then uh, cp commercial paper and certificate of deposits so these are the main components like which are you know traded in money market to raise short term money from the market okay uh, the next concept in this unit is loan syndication now it occurs when two or more lenders or banks come together to fund a single borrower do teen char bank milke agar you know agar loan ka amount bahut zyada hai to you know it is not possible to arrange such a huge amount from a single bank so it can ask other banks to collaborate with it and uh, to give loan to the uh, to the borrower so that is called loan syndication now you should know about like how it happens process of loan syndication and uh, the next topic it's a very important topic that is uh, prime lending rate plr now this is the rate of interest charged by the commercial banks to its customers right and uh, basically these rates include uh, mortgage rates small business loans personal loans like that and uh, few approaches or models of uh, loan pricing are there in this like you know th there is a fixed model rate where the rate interest rates are fixed all throughout the uh, time period then we have variable rate for different customers uh, banks charge different uh, rate of interest then prime rate model uh like you know uh, the like uh, smaller rate is charged with uh, good customers than a rate of general customers it's a you know simple rate like all uh, like same rate for all the customers then you should know about yield curve it's important concept you might get in short notes also and it is basically a graphical representation of the interest rates which are charged by a bank uh you know to different uh, borrowers and uh, uh, there are some factors which influence this yield rate uh, first one is inflation inflation is the rise in the price level so accordingly they change their rates and uh, economic growth you know to uh, to to enhance economic growth of a country uh, this yield rate can be increased and decreased as per the situation then interest rates so these three factors affect the curve and a few important uh, or significance of this like uh, it helps to forecast the interest rate future interest rates and uh, it acts as a intermediary or you know uh, middleman and the trade off between maturity and yield so that can be achieved through uh, yield rate so like this Uh, unit 4 is on balance of payment uh, you know this topic is common almost in all the units so i have explained this thousand of times so you can watch from there okay uh, then we have the next unit that is foreign exchange markets okay in this unit uh, you should read about this uh, foreign exchange uh, market that is uh, forex and basically uh, in this type of uh, international market 
foreign currencies are bought and sold that means you can buy any such uh, foreign currency in this market and can even sell when its price rises to your expectations and the main traders here are brokers banks financial institutions and uh, uh, like you know it happens you know it 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 uh, includes all over the world and a few functions of this market are you know transfer of money you can transfer uh, the money through this market and it also provides credit facilities to good customers and even like it provides the uh, services of hedging right and few advantages are there of this forex market it provides the basic flexibility like means you can easily convert the uh, your domestic currency into foreign currency or vice versa and uh, the transactions are very very transparent so there is no chances of cheating and all those fraudulent activities and it also provides uh, facilities for options trading so this foreign uh, forex markets are very very popular all over the world uh, these are few features and different types of uh, foreign exchange market in india basically three types one is a spot market where the currencies are quickly uh, uh, traded and in future markets uh, the currencies are traded at a future rate of uh, rate of exchange and there is a market called forward market so <clears throat> in forward market the uh, currencies the exchange rates are negotiated between the parties okay then uh, unit 6 determination of uh, determination and forecasting of foreign exchange now here you should uh, revise exchange rate mechanism which is in short known as erm and basically it is a system or a device used by countries to manage the strength of their currency and uh, basically like like how much uh, strong is the domestic currency in terms of foreign currency and uh, it's uh, you know how it works so this is uh, the question how do exchange rate works basically uh, they follow the international uh, standard of uh, goods uh, international standard of uh, exchange rates and it can be fixed or fluctuating and basically they track this gold rate and exchange rate mechanism allows central banks to influence the domestic currency in the foreign market and it also enables the central bank to adjust the currency peg uh, basically you know every country wants its currency uh, to be traded at a higher rate okay so uh, the main uh, uh, the object of rbi or central bank is to you know to increase that exchange rate and uh, the different types of exchange rate mechanisms just now i told you about this fixed rate and adjustable peg rate and this is you know fluctuating rate and uh, the next topic is exchange rate forecasting in international market how this forecasting is done <clears throat> there are many concepts like, like you know many uh, reasons for this because it depends on the political situation and uh, the risk associated with the the, the concerned uh, country so lot of things depend on the development infrastructure facility investment so all these affect the exchange rate in the international market a few models of exchange rates are there to forecast uh, from there you know this ppp that is purchasing power parity model uh, this one is a very important you can get it in a short note also very important one and the purchasing power uh, it is based on you know the law of one price it states that the same goods in different countries should have the same price right and uh, there will be no arbitrage opportunity to buy cheap for one country and uh, to sell a profit uh, to another country so that is not there right and uh, the next model is relative economic strength model and it determines the direction of exchange rate by taking into consideration the strength of the economic growth and development of the countries concerned so this is also a good model then we have econometric model as it implies econometry that means depends on the you know prevailing economic conditions of a country and time series model where uh, you know <coughs> we look after the trend the previous trend and the future trend on the basis of that 
the exchange rates are fixed uh, then the next important question is why do central banks intervene in the international market or foreign exchange market and uh, just now i told you that every country wants its uh, currency to be exchanged at a higher rate so to maintain that central bank often you know interrupts between this uh, it closely monitors the international market the next unit is on currency risk management and these three types of risk are there with every international traded transaction risk economic risk and translation risk transaction risk is a very common risk where you know due to transactions the risk arises and uh, some of the basic uh, reasons for this can be you know foreign exchange uh, commodity exchange then interest rate fluctuations then uh, time risk because with the lapse of time the risk happens and counterparty risk so these are few you know transaction risks like that in economic risk uh, as the name implies it depends on the economic policies of uh, the country concerned uh, where you know sovereign risk independence risk then we have unexpected swing in the exchange rate due to international conditions and credit risk so these are few economic risk in translation risk basically when a company does business outside the country but its uh, financial performance is measured in the domestic country so this is uh, one problem uh, due to which this type of risk arises translation risk okay uh, the next topic is uh, what are derivatives these are basically financial contracts between two or more parties that derive their value from underlying asset uh, basically uh, these are traded on an exchange over the counter and prices of derivatives are derived from the fluctuations in the prices of the concerned asset and again uh, it can be of different types like future contracts forwards options and swaps and this difference between the future and options very important a uh, lot of times uh, it comes in the exams and uh, let's move on to the next topic uh, what are international swaps now this uh, icda that is international swap and derivative association it's a professional organization created by a group of banks and it helps to improve the market for privately negotiated over the counter uh, derivatives that is otc uh, to reduce the risk in the international level and uh, it performs three key functions what are those now to reduce the counterparty credit risk to increase transparency in the transactions to improve infrastructure and derivative industries okay unit 8 again like uh, you should read about this transaction exposure it is a type of risk only just now we studied about this so same topic same concept so either one of them you can revise okay uh, the next one is uh, corporate strategy and fti now <clears throat> what is the policy of india towards foreign direct investment now basically india aims at you know to reduce the cost of production of its goods and services to diversify the market potential and area so that more markets can be captured and to attain this economies of large scale production of goods and services that means at minimum cost maximum production and to promote knowledge sharing and globalization to increase the domestic customer base and supply of international quality of goods and services so these are main policies some regulations are there uh, which are there to attract foreign investment and uh, these are few regulations or steps taken by the government like fdi is permitted 100% fdi is permitted in almost all the sectors special economic zones are are set up in india to promote fdi then we have eou they are also like uh, foreign investors can invest in large um, quantity we have industrial parks and we have software technologies where these are all you know based on uh, to promote to uh, international trade uh, then we have you can get a question on fema fema that is foreign exchange management act which was framed in 1999 and basically uh, for a smooth functioning of the uh, for of the 
uh, import export trade in india this act was passed and it regulates uh, it controls all the activities of international trade that takes place in india okay then uh, the role of uh, foreign investment policy that is uh, fdi in india as we know like fdi plays a very important role in almost all the countries and uh, why basically you know uh, through this foreign investment when in a, when a country gets foreign money so it can you know expand its infrastructure production facilities it can develop the present industries so that provides employment opportunities and uh, ultimately that results in economic growth and development uh, human resources can be developed they can be trained in better institutes uh, production units in india can use latest technology which can be imported uh, it promotes export it develops a competitive market in india as well as in the foreign countries and again like domestic countries get a lot of helps through fdi because they get that required infrastructure uh, one more question uh, difference between foreign direct investment and foreign portfolio investment now fdi generally it's you know direct investment in the country where portfolio refers to the investment made in financial asset of a company and it is basically this portfolio investment it is a mixture of both like you know direct cash and investment through technology or capital assets and these are very volatile in nature that means they can vary but this one is stable for an direct investment okay friends the next unit is international project appraisal and basically as the name implies project appraisal that means to find whether the project is profitable or is there any chances of loss that means strengths and weakness of a project is determined through this appraisal so before a company invest in a foreign market so it always you know makes an analysis of the project which it wants to undertakes so these are few processes like identifying the strategic factors for the success then analyzing those factors systematically Uh, determining the strengths and weaknesses of the project and constructing the comparative advantage of the company so these four factors are considered before investing in a foreign project and uh, some techniques are there for this appraisal these three techniques are very very popular one uh, first one is the dsf discounted cash flow technique then uh, non dcf that is non uh, a discounted cash flow technique and third one adjusted present value technique apv so basically discounted uh, depends on the time value of money because uh, it always keeps on changing as the time uh, you know lapses the value of money generally increases so looking at that we generally use this formula to calculate the dcf of a project uh, some advantages and disadvantages of this also because it is one of the most popular method for uh, the appraisal of a project and uh, this is undiscounted <coughs> uh, cash flow uh, it does not incorporate any time value of money uh, and is just the opposite of cash flow and it just you know normal value of cash flows when it comes to making an investment so that is what is considered in uh, undiscounted cash flow Uh, this difference will make your concept clear between dcf and non dcf and uh, when we talk about adjusted present value method basically in this method different components of a project cash flows are discounted separately right and that means every cash flow is discounted uh, individually and the main components uh, of this app are the initial investment then uh, the remittance of the cash flow like how much cash flow will be generated then contribution of subsidies and concession and tax savings and other tra uh, other transfers some issues uh, which you can also go through in this uh, unit unit 12 is on cost of capital for foreign investment cost of capital is the rate of return a firm requires from its investment in the foreign countries so cost of capital is not that cost it is the rate of return right so that is to be kept in mind uh, this one is a very popular question which strikes many times in the exams 
कैपिटल एसेट प्राइसिंग मॉडल सी ए पी एम इट डिस्क्राइब्स द रिलेशन बिटवीन सिस्टमेटिक रिस्क एंड एक्सपेक्टेड रिटर्न बिकॉज यू नो एवरी इन्वेस्टमेंट हैज सर्टन रिस्क एंड देर इज द रिटर्न मोर द रिस्क मोर आर द चांसेस ऑफ रिटर्न सो दैट इज द की सो एवरी इन्वेस्टर बेटर अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू शुड लुक आफ्टर दिस एजम्पन्स दैट इन केस ऑफ सी ए पी एम दिज एजम्पन्स are considered investors are price takers that means they do not fix prices they accept prices their expectations are homogeneous all the investors they have homogeneous expect uh, uh, expectations then uh, there is a presence of riskless asset there are no transaction cost or taxes and market is perfectly competitive so these four assumptions are there to incorporate capm okay the next one is uh, political risk as we know like different countries have different political system and there are chances of risk given and uh, these two types broad categories of uh, political risk macro and micro macro basically you know it's the big type of risk like you know uh, changes in the current currency actions uh, then uh, any you know corruption then uh, sovereign credit default declaration of war so all these are macro big risk and micro risk basically you know uh, some sort of uh, small cheating work or fraudulent work or any such uh, you know local government uh, uh, policy changes so like that uh, some of the factors that contribute to political risk uh, basically this every government has its own ideology and that has to be understood by the foreign investors and there is a feeling of nationalism Uh, in every country so they generally they do not like uh, foreign goods in some countries and uh, one more factor that is stability of the government if there are frequent changes in the government the risk is more and uh, in uh, international relationship that is uh, the relation between the two uh, trading countries if the relation is good the risk is less uh, there are some methods to measure this political risk like if there are frequent changes in the government then there is uh, more political risk the level of violence in the country the number of armed insurrections like you know foreign or neighboring countries when attack the other country then conflict between the countries and there are some strategies to manage this political risk like we can control this we can avoid this first one the company can absolutely avoid this is the simplest method the second one it can make a insurance against the political risk it can negotiate with the foreign uh, uh, country that you know in case of any such risk uh, like they will not be responsible and structuring the investment like properly managing controlling and regulating the investment so that is the key uh, the next concept here is uh, multilateral investment guarantee agency uh, mica now uh, mica is a member of world bank group and uh, it was created in 1988 to promote foreign direct investment into the foreign countries and it fulfills uh, and contributes to the development of all the political risk insurance to investors and it also provides investment guarantee against non commercial risk so there are a lot of things lot of benefits of this mica and uh, these are few uh, roles of uh, mica okay then we have a short note on international tax planning so you know different countries have different tax structures so this one is very important you they have to first determine how much tax they are going to pay or how much uh, tax they can uh, save uh, during this uh, foreign dealings so all these are planning done by the company okay the next unit is international cash management and here we are managing the cash how to manage the international cash the main object of this is to maximize the cash inflows and minimize the borrowings reduce the foreign exchange exposure stabilize the fluctuations in foreign exchange and to minimize the transaction cost so these are the main uh, four uh, this thing objectives of cash management again it can be of two types centralized cash management 
where all the decisions of cash management are done by at a center by a group of individuals or by a single man and in decentralized cash management you know uh, different departments or sections are authorized to do the cash management okay <clears throat> the next one is uh, foreign trade financing uh, in this unit we will start with documents required in the foreign trade it was also there in ibo 03 IBO 0, um, uh, 05 so you can go through that because this is a very common topic uh, and uh, present in almost all the IBO subjects uh, like that letter of credit this is also explained in IBO 1 2 and uh, then this concept forfeiting forfeiting is a method of trade financing and in this process uh, exporters sell their foreign receivables either for a long term or a medium uh, term to a forfeiter at a discount okay it is just like a you know bills of exchange and the forfeiter then gets the sum due from the importer on the due date and uh, these are generally a non recourse basis the transaction occurs and uh, the forfeiter has all the rights to recover the payment from the importer so like this uh, some features are there of forfeiting uh, this one is a very important topic also and uh, documents which are required for forfeiting different types of forfeiting are there just now I told you about that bills of exchange promissory notes and accounts receivables so this can be forfeited by uh, through a forfeiter and uh, there are some advantages of forfeiting because company can immediately get, uh, get a payment for its uh, sale and disadvantage is also because uh, the company has to pay uh, you know a discount and uh, a commission to the forfeiter okay then we have uh, guarantee or bonds in the international trade and these are the different types of guarantees or bonds which are there in the trade like you know this uh, tender or bid guarantee uh, bonds performance bond advance payment bonds and then we have retention bonds so all these bonds are there in the international trade one by one you can explain this okay then we have uh, a short note on counter trade this one also you can go through this and uh, this question transfer pricing this this concept is also very important where you know it is an accounting price uh, practice that represents the price that one division charges to the other division that means you know in case of uh, say unilever it, it is present in almost all the countries of the world so when it uh, transfers its goods from one country to another so generally to save the taxes uh, they charge uh, different types of prices in different countries uh, different methods are there for this uh, transfer pricing uh, this one comparative uh, uncontrolled method then we have resale price method this one is a very popular method CPM is a very popular method cost plus profit method then profit split method so through these methods transfer pricing can be done easily by a company okay uh, unit 17 here uh, like uh, project financing it is on project financing if you are investing in a foreign country project so how do you get the finance if you are lacking that so <clears throat> there are few advantages of this like uh, it is a good source of earning by utilizing the domestic resources uh, then it helps uh, to export technical services and manpower and you can also import better technology from the foreign uh, countries it provides credit facilities on easy terms so like that there are many advantages of this project financing uh, there are different risks attached with this uh, project export like commercial risk uh, then we have country risk that is political risk and exchange rate or interest rates we have discussed this in the uh, previously in this video okay now we can also minimize this uh, project export risk by advance payment through foreign uh, forex market uh, through agent agents and uh, through deferred uh, system so these are few important questions that you should uh, you know revise before going to the exams so a very best of luck for the exams and uh, thank you very much for uh, watching my videos